Hi, Dr. Charles Martin here with Calculation Consulting. This week I'd like to talk a little bit about data cleaning. You know, it has been said that when you do a machine learning project or an AI engagement, over 50% of the time is spent just cleaning the data. Well, what does that even mean? You know, it's, it's just a giant catch-all for all the things that a data scientist has to do in order to set up, prepare, and run experiments. So today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what you should expect from a machine learning engagement and what data cleaning really involves. Now I had a client come to me this summer, we were working together, working on methods to predict the stock market. And he purchased his data set and he asked me, he wanted to see, is this data set useful or not? Can you take a look at the data and tell me if it's useful? I go, well, yeah, that's the engagement. I mean, that's the whole project. That's what we do. We look at the data and try to determine what's useful or not. And when you're talking about massive data sets, you know, like, what am I going to do? Am I going to look at every single record in, in the database? Of course not. What you have to do is you have to set up some back of the envelope calculations and try to do some things and then see whether the data is good or not. And, and this is what it means to begin looking at your data. But data cleaning seems to have this really specific sort of disdain by some people. They think that for some reason data scientists don't want to clean their data or that for some reason you need to hire an army of junior engineers to go through and clean the data up before you even start doing a data science project. And you know, yes and no. I mean, I think it's important to understand what's going on inside your organization and what you should expect. So let me give you a few examples. A lot of organizations, especially very large organizations, have lots and lots of databases and lots of data storage systems. You might have Oracle, SQL Server, and Hadoop all running in the, under the same organization. Plus you have data sitting in CSV files and other types of flat files, and maybe some data sitting in Mongo. And in order to do a data science project, you have to join all of this data together in some way to get inputs into the machine learning algorithm. So in some sense, this is a form of data cleaning. And it, it's actually quite complicated. It can be complicated because the data is sitting in different kinds of data sources, so you can't just execute a SQL join. And it's complicated because the data is described dif different way in different databases. For example, a typical customer database might have the full name listed as one column in the database. But another data system might have the first name and the last name as separate columns. And you have to know this to do the join. And the machine learning algorithms don't do this for you automatically. You know, a human has to go in and look at these data schemas and figure out what's going on. Now, some organizations are more organized than others. BlackRock, for example, where I worked several years ago, was a phenomenally well-organized organization. All of their data was in one giant Oracle database, and it worked perfectly. On the other hand, when BlackRock acquired Lehman Brothers, and there was a joke going around the organization, it looked like Lehman Brothers had more databases than they had customers. And it was just a nightmare to try to figure out how are we going to unwind all of these positions that Lehman Brothers have created and figure out what they're doing. We have to join all this data together. It's an incredibly expensive, time-consuming, labor-intensive process. So the amount of data organization you need to do is really going to depend on how much, how well structured the data is in your organization and how often you've spent the time to go through these databases and make sure that they're consistent and that the data in them, you know what data is in them and the data in them satisfies relational integrity and, and these kinds of things. Now, a lot of organizations are moving to Hadoop. And this is great because, you know, they're taking all their data from all these different databases and putting it into Hadoop. However, that doesn't mean you can get it out. I, I, I joked once with uh, the MBA class I was teaching that, you know, putting data into Hadoop is like putting things in boxes and putting them in your garage and then asking someone to go to your garage and find some random screwdriver or wrench in some random box. And, and I mean this literally. Uh, a couple of years ago, we worked with a very large enterprise client and they had one of the largest Hadoop deployments in the world. Very, very, and literally. They were able to get us one column of data from the Hadoop data store. One column. Nobody knows what's in it. Nobody knows how to get to it. 
and it's just so, it, it, there's so much in it, and it's just not well organized in a way that people can get to it. So even if you have all your data in one place, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be easy to get to or that your data scientist is going to know what to do. It's just going to take time. Um, uh, another example would be the idea that you can just hand off data to someone. I worked at eBay years ago, and this was a common problem that they were having. They had worked on this customer support system, and they wanted the support system to classify the emails into buckets. And they, they, they you know, labeled all the data, got all the emails, put it in the buckets, and handed it off to the consultant. And the consultant comes back, and the, the results are just nonsensical, you know, just useless. And the manager, you know, he had seen this kind of system working in other companies, was trying to figure out what's wrong here. You know, we've collected all our data, we've labeled it for you, we handed it off to you. Why can't you get the algorithms to work? Well. As in, in many engineering problems, the errors occur at the interfaces. So at some point during the collection of this data and the labeling of the data, something went wrong. Someone misunderstood what was happening and they mislabeled data or they put data into the wrong buckets and as a result, the algorithms could do nothing with it. So it was necessary to, I, I think it's been three months on the phone on this engagement, just going and talking to different kinds of people in the organization, understanding how the data was collected and organizing, and trying to figure out what happened. How did the data get mislabeled? And once we, once we resolved it, no problem. We were able to get the system working in a couple days. But that was the nature of the engagement. So even if you think that you've collected all your data and it's ready to hand off to the consultant, you may find that there's an error somewhere in it. And it really is the job of the data scientist to figure out what went wrong. So I guess that's kind of like data cleaning. Now, let me give you a really, uh, a really interesting example. A couple of years ago, we were working with a client who wanted us to predict their sales data. And they wanted to know, does the weather impact our sales? Okay, that seems, it's a complicated problem, but it seems like a fun problem. So we start looking at the data and you know, pulling it out of the database, which in itself was, was a challenging problem. You know, we got the data and we began to realize that the only time the data had ever been used before was in a reporting calculation. And in this reporting application and calculation they would give to the clients, the data where the weather had impacted the sales had been modified. It had been impugned so that if the sales were, were going very nicely and then they dropped very suddenly, that drop was removed from the data because it didn't look correct in the report. You know, they wanted the report to look smooth and understandable. And these outliers, well, they were just outliers, so just remove them. Well, of course, it was the outliers that they wanted to predict. So nobody, know, nobody had known that the data had been impugned until we went and tried to do the project and we realized what had happened. And then we had to go back to the raw data files and get the column that, in the logs that had not been impugned. So that, that is a very, very common problem. These kinds of data problems come up all the time. And I would not say that data cleaning is something that you can just hand off to a junior engineer and expect them to do it. We had a client last year who came to us and they had, they had acquired a company a couple years ago and they had a machine learning product. But you know, the staff had left, they want us to try to get it working for them. So you know, we went through and they said, well, you know, we've already built the features, we just need you to get it working. Ah, you've already built the features, okay. So after some period of time, we scratch our head, we can't get this thing to go above a certain level of accuracy. We're just like, what is going on here? And we go and look inside the feature and we find out, aha, information has leaked from the future into the past. The feature had been built and it was a good feature, but the way it was built, information had leaked into the future. And, and amazingly in the documentation, it said, oh, when you build this feature, it appears that information has leaked from the future into the past. So, you know, we rebuilt it, but th this is something that again, errors occur in the interfaces. If you have one group building features and another group designing algorithms and they're not talking to each other and they don't know what's going on, information can leak into the system and you don't really know it's there. And the data scientist has to be able to go back and go all the way back to the source of the information, find out how is this feature collect, how is the data collected and how is this feature constructed? If you just try to hand it off to them, it, it's very, very hard because there are no checks and balances. Think about a software engineering system. You build an API, you can test the API. You can hand the API off to someone and they have some assurance that the API works correctly. In data science, how do you do that? 
How do you test that information has not leaked into your features if somebody else has built them? That's very hard. You know, you have to do some sort of experiment that demonstrates that the feature is good. And that's why data cleaning is such a really hard problem. Now, we, we see many, many types of these issues that come up all the time. We, we had an IoT client, and they had collected data in the lab. And we built an algorithm that worked really well. And then we put the algorithm in production, it doesn't work at all. Go, what's going on? Well, you know, we, we even offer, we'll collect the data. Well, no, we, they wouldn't let us collect the data, okay? Well, you know, I don't know what happened. You know, why is the data in the lab not the same as what's going on in production? Hard to tell. There's no way, unless we go in, you know, bring in an electrical engineer and figure out what it was done, which we tried to do. Unless you do that, it's very hard to know what's going on. So these are the kind of things that come up all the time when you're doing a data science engagement. You know, you, you have to collect the data. You have to prepare the data. You may have to augment the data by you know, getting other data sets. And when you start running your machine learning experiments, you have to look and ask, is the data that I have Correct. Does it make sense? Has it been impugned? Is there information leakage? Does it, does it, does it, is it going to work in production the same way it worked in test? These are all very complicated problems and are part of the data science engagement. So when you're thinking about data cleaning, yes, it's important to get your data organized, to put it into one central system and to know what you have. But you should not expect that just because you spent two years putting data into Hadoop, and you've looked at it very carefully, that once you start doing your machine learning engagement, that the data you have is going to be exactly what you need. And you should not expect that you've somehow cut out this 50% of the data cleaning. Because looking at your data and analyzing the data and building features and running experiments, this is what a machine learning engagement is all about. I hope this has been helpful and I thank you for coming by my channel. Uh, please subscribe and you will get more of these kinds of data science street tips, hopefully on a weekly basis. I'm Charles Martin again with Calculation Consulting.